Well, I spoke to Jeffrey Robinson, author of The Laundrymen, for his reaction to the vine. I find that the decision by the Justice Department not to indict them for criminal money laundering and charge them with that is scandalous. I mean, this is not just some petty little incident. This is a huge conspiracy to bring Mexican drug cartel money through the U.S. financial system. Uh, that is a criminal act. And what's the sense of having the, the laws that we've got on the books about money laundering if you're not going to charge the bank and the bankers? Uh, it's, it's, it's beyond belief that the Justice Department would... Um, but would they're, be such cowards. Their concern, they say, is the fact that, you know, there was fear there would be a destabilization of the global financial system. And so that's the reason for proceeding this way. I mean, isn't that that's a valid nonsense. concern? Uh, baloney. Absolute baloney. No, it's not a valid concern. First of all, you're not bringing down the bank. You are charging the bank and various bankers with a criminal act. And they should be held accountable. Now, you've been researching money laundering for a very long time and writing about it as well. Just how egregious is this case, comparatively speaking? Well, consider the fact that money is the lifeblood of all businesses. Uh, you know, if you're talking about uh, General Motors, if you're talking about Microsoft, if you're talking about Apple, if you're talking about Al Jazeera, you're talking about cash flow and reinvestment. Crime is a business as well. And drug trafficking, uh, for example, relies entirely on cash flow and reinvestment. What you've got in Mexico at the moment is, uh, is a narco economy in the midst of, of what probably is a civil war. Now, if you allow the cartels to use the cash flow and reinvest, you simply increase the, uh, the violence and the uh, drug trafficking. What you have to do is you've got to cut off the cash flow, cut off the reinvestment, and like any business without it, you would bankrupt them. The fact that HSBC uh, was dealing with these people, knowingly or unknowingly, it doesn't matter. The fact that they were dealing with these people and allowing these gangs to, um, to continue their business is a very egregious act and needs to be dealt with in the criminal courts. And HSBC, though, has said, to, to, for its credit, has said that, you know, that was then, this is now, it's a very different company now. We've put internal controls into place to make sure this doesn't happen again. I mean, isn't that a demonstration, at least, that the company is trying to change its behavior? Oh, sure. And when I rob your bank and they come and catch me, I'll say, you know what, guys, I, it was only one time. That was then. This is now. I won't rob any banks anymore. No, it doesn't work like that. The people who committed this crime need to be held accountable. And when you look at what, what the Justice Department has done, you have all sorts of questions. First of all, did they have a grand jury? Did they pull a grand jury to indict them criminally and simply not announce that? If they did, why didn't they announce it? Why didn't they charge criminal charges? If they didn't convene a grand jury, why not? I mean, the idea of a deferred prosecution, which is what this is, they have said to the bank, okay, this is now, we will defer the prosecution of the criminal charges and you have to be a good boy from now on and we will fine you $1.9 billion. Now that sounds like a lot of money and to you and me it probably is. To HSBC, where the, the value of the bank is $190 billion, that represents 1% of the market value of HSBC. That doesn't hurt. That does not hurt them. Now, if you're going to inflict pain to change behavior, this is not the way to do it. But won't it be painful, the fact that it will be subject to further scrutiny and perhaps punitive action if it doesn't continue to comply with the conditions of this settlement? Rob a bank and try and get away with that excuse. It does not work. They have committed a criminal act. What's more, uh, in finding the bank this, this $1.9 billion, uh, the markets themselves were expecting a much more serious reaction. And you can tell that because when it was announced in London this morning, HSBC, HSBC shares ticked up just a little bit. They should have dived. They didn't. The market was expecting worse. They figured whew, they certainly dodged this bullet and we'll stick with them in the share markets. So are you saying that it's not likely to have any impact moving forward on HSBC? None whatsoever. Because when you find these guys, 
Look at what happened. You know, this is this is one of a series of things that have happened in the past few years. Uh, ING's been done. Standard Chartered's been done. Wachovia before it. When you find these guys, you don't change their behavior. The fine is simply the cost of doing business. What changes the banker's behavior is when you put him in an orange jumpsuit and you lock him in a six by four cell with a guy named Bruce who's got two fang tattoos on the side of his neck. That gets his attention.